Sports Pueblo, 1350. This is the John Riston Show. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Let's join the voices of the pack. Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Along with CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves head coach, John Riston. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Andy Max for the John Riston Show. As uh, we get ready for Mesa, there I think they got us up in the room there. There we go. Yeah, hello everybody. John, John Riston's here, everybody. In the house. This is the head coach right here. All right, there you go. Everybody still recognizes you, John. That's a good thing. And uh, Thunderwolves taking on Mesa this week. It's the battle for the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference title. Whoever wins the ball game will win the title, at least a share of it, no matter what happens the following week, the way the RMAC does it. But you win it this week. Then you got a leg up on everybody, and then you got that final ball game. But uh, that's what is at stake. Two o'clock game at the uh, Thunder Bowl on Saturday. And if you're heading on down here, come on down to Andy Max. We just delivered our, our balls. cordon blue balls. <laughs> and the uh, the uh, what are the rest? The, of, what are the other the ones? Pa- the poppers. The, the poppers. There we go. The jalapeno poppers. I'm a little afraid of jalapenos, Joe. After we, we after our, a- our Friday night meal, but that's another story for another time. John, welcome, buddy. What's happening, guys? You doing all right? We're excited. Looking can, forward to this week. Can you see those other ones again? The uh, cordon blue ball. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought you said. I just wanted to make sure I heard you. I have cordon blue balls every Wednesday. <laughs> oh, it's quite a deal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I could imagine. I can get away with saying that. Yes, you can. Because it's a factual thing. I guess what the heck? I'm with you too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, Johnny went made the uh, trip up to the, the Black Hills, the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota, and uh, you know somebody's asking me how the game go. Why did it go kind of the way it did early on? And you go, you know what? I think John, see if you agree with me. You're kind of experimenting, trying to get as big a lead as possible without having to rely too much on Cam. But then once. You know, the game was still within doubt there, 14-3. to 3. You know what? We better give it to the big fella. Let him run and get us into the lead, and then maybe we can worry about running some different plays. But uh, first quarter, some different things you did on offense, and then when, once you got back to Cam again, I think it was uh, thoroughly efficient. But the other thing in the ball game, too, you get the ball in the hands of Kieran Duncan, good things happen. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know if we were out experimenting or not. It really wasn't part of our game plan, I think. We just didn't take advantage for some opportunities. Um, I, I think uh, I was conservative. I, we could have kicked the full goal, right. and I went for it on fourth and five on the uh, 25-ish in that area. And, and, and I, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where um, – you know, we we didn't put the ball in the end zone like um, we have been in that in that scenario. But the reality of this, our defense was playing lights out. Our defense gave up 41 yards right. total at at the half. So you, you feel pretty good on that. And and I I didn't plan on going in this game giving Cam the ball 30 times. And when I looked at the stat sheet at the end, he said he carried three times. That was not my plan, and I don't think it was any of our plan. And so, uh, but to Cam's credit, I go, "Hey, you, you doing all right? You got, yeah, I, I want to go one more series." He said I kept, "I want to go one more series." So, when that horse wants to go one more series, you get it out of the way, and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad he's sure he's definitely on our team. He is like a great. If we're going to do the baseball analogy, the World Series just ending up. A good workhorse pitcher wants the ball, and he just wants to go out there. It's not going to affect him that extra couple innings of work. It's he's, you know, he's out there doing it. He's in condition to do it. No big deal, right? Yeah, I think that uh, he, he's a guy that really wants to say, put on my back, and I'm going to carry this team. And he's done it all year, and he, he was going to do it on on game nine. And uh, and I think that without Bernard there being able to do that, he think he felt a little more responsibility because I, there was times where I think he would have came out and let Bernard play a little bit. <laughs> and I think that's the brotherly love they have, and that's the respect they have for each other. And uh, I think that's kind of what it kept him. But I think also, you know, when when we were down Zach Boyd and we were down uh, Chance Rodriguez in our guard position. Uh, a lot of those were affected kind of what we were doing for a while and, and then sooner or later it, you know, things were going to happen. Well, just talking to Cam after the game, Cam's least favorite subject to talk about is Cam. <laughs> you know, he if you talk about Bernard or the team or the defense, he will open up and tell you everything. But he doesn't want to talk about himself, but he said walking off the field Saturday, he said, you know, 
this was my time to carry the load, and I knew it going in. So, he, you know, you could tell, I, I don't know, your former player is, there are times where you know it's going to be your time to carry the load, and, and he seemed totally comfortable with that. Well, I, I think that's a mark of a true competitor, a guy that wants to do whatever his team needs for him to win, and that's that's Cam McDonald. I mean, he, he's a selfish selfless individual and he's not selfish <laughs> right yeah, so but it, it it may seem that way with all the things he does but he's just a joy to coach he's just a joy for people to come watch you know the, the people of public colorado you're you're watching a special 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 human being that is absolutely putting this team on his back and so uh you got one more guaranteed opportunity to come watch him play and so ho- hopefully the people will come out and, and uh support the Thunderwolves this weekend. Well, not only he the senior, but the rest of your senior. This is a dynamite senior class you got on this football. They've already, as juniors, won the national title. Now here they are as seniors. But uh, when you look back on it, maybe it might, you know, or each year it seems to get better and better. But I think we can definitely say this is... Would you probably your greatest senior class, wouldn't you say? Uh, you know, from from the very there's 18 guys that are going to walk, um, go through our senior ceremony, and you know the, these kids have given everything they they've had. They have gone to class. They get in their degrees. There's not one that's not going to get his degree, and uh, it, it's just is a really really high character class. And you know what? What I'm really proud of is, is that. Uh, we recruited these guys four or five years ago, and there's no transfers. There's nobody that's a part of that, and I think it's a credit of those kids staying together. And I've always said this: I really believe if I can have 20 guys walk on senior day, you're going to have a chance to win a lot of games. And these kids have demonstrated that. You know, you look at their career, and and the, they've been able to be a part of really something that started back in 2011. And for them to have a chance to go and, and finish this on, on um, th- this year and have a chance to uh, opportunity to go win another title in 2015. Wow. You don't ever exactly. get a chance to do that. And, and um, you know, they, they've kind of set the standard of what it is to be a, a tremendous Thunderwolf. I don't care what, what sport, what league, what level. If you win five conference championships in a row, that's that's impressive. I know the national championship was in there last year, but to win a conference five years in a row is something that I think is is a little bit lost in all of this, and but it shouldn't be. It should be right up there in the forefront. Well, I, I you know, we, we got to go one and all this Right, week. right. And, uh, you know, you get caught up in all those things, those statistics wise, but the reality of this, we got to go one and all, and we got to play it and do it pack way, and we got to understand this process, and we're playing one hell of a team, and it, it, it's what it should boil down to the first weekend in November to have a chance to play for something. You want a chance to play for something, and I think both teams are deserving. I think both teams are looking forward to this opportunity, and I couldn't be prouder of our group of 18 seniors that have really established the foundation of what it meant to be a Thunderwolf. Well, we talk about 18 seniors, but when you look back, John, each and every year you bring in 50 to 60 guys, it seems like, when yeah. you count the walk-ons and the, everybody that's coming out on the field. These are like 18 survivors. These are the ones that have gone through all those early morning workouts, two days in the summer. I mean, these are the guys that have stuck it out. There are men, many that have come through glorified resumes. They get here, they don't last a year or two. Some don't even last a year because they can't hack it. These 18 truly survive uh, what is a very tough, rigorous program, not only on the field, but off the field. And you got to stay eligible. There's all kinds of things that go into it. they got to be saluted. Well, I, you know, like, like I said, if you had a definition of a class staying together, this is a picture to take and put it in, in the dictionary of what it means to set a standard. And, you know, the, these kids are just special. And it, it's, you know, college football is not for everyone. And college football here at CSU Pueblo is not for everyone. And, it, and it's not tough. It's just the reality of being being able to be accountable, doing the right thing, and being above it, and putting your head down and going to work. That's a simple formula, but not a lot of young people can handle that, and they all want to do it their own way. 
and uh, I'm proud of these 18 seniors that have checked their eagles at the door and have come to work and, and has made a decision to wear the red, white, and blue. And it's part of this is that, you know, we recruited them to go do this. They they chose us to go be able to be a part of that. What a great match, and I'm looking for matches to be a part of that. And if I could find another 18 like this, it, 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 my job's easy. i got to order the bus and be a stagehand and pull the curtains and do those things. Well, that's what I was just going to say is we, we sit up there and – we write stories and talk about these 18, and we look at them and go, how are they going to replace these guys? And then you do. You know, if you go all the way back to Lee Meisner and that group and go, how are they going to replace these guys? And then you do. How are you going to replace a Jesse Lewis or a, or, or a Ross Dowson or a Chris Bonner? And then you do. And that's what I think is, you know, everybody asks, that's, that's probably the question yeah. we get the most is, well, how are they going to be next year? <laughs> How are they going to be next week? How are they going to be next? Now, they don't enjoy the moment for yeah. the moment, but how are they going to be next? And I, you know what? Let's worry about that it's, later. It's on an upward trajectory, <laughs> trajectory with a zero ceiling right now. Well, I, I, part of that is that I think each group has a standard in front of them, and they want to set their own standard about what it, it means to be the, the about the pride and tradition of pack football and will not be entrusted to Tim and Northern Week. And so part of that is the way I think those group of guys understand and train and and so they're part they're passing this legacy. These guys have really only lost really four games in if they're a four year senior since they've been here. Can you believe that? Four games in their whole year. Now let's let's hope it's four by the time we play Saturday. Yeah. I, I but right now it's four games. And so those guys ought to be saluted since we're talking those seniors and, and it, it's it's been a special group. I've only been in seven Team losing locker rooms in eight years. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, that counts the first couple that were, that were tough. Four and six. Yeah. <laughs> and seven and four, you have ten of those in the right first Right there, exactly. Years. So that is that is amazing feat. Well, plenty of time to get on down here. We've got a great crowd in here tonight at Andy Max, but, you know, there's a little booth and a chair right next to you. If you come on down here right now, you can sit we, next to us. We, we also have a microphone for some questions. Yeah, we got Jim. two of these beautiful national championship footballs from a year ago. If you come here, if you're in the house, give us a question. You get a chance to win that. We're going to get some tickets later, maybe. Uh, uh, I, K.O., we, we gave this week's tickets out last week. Okay, so we got so. the two footballs. So that's uh, that's that's good enough. That's good enough incentive for you to get on up here. Plus uh, the number to call or the number to call, well, the text, 719-671-7574. See, my brother checked in. I'll have to tell you. Whoa. It's a little off color. I don't know if I want to get away with it because we're still we're going to get over talking about the balls. But, and we do have tickets but. coming. <laughs> Oh, okay, we good. We do. All right. Well, I can say what you know, Tommy. It's all right. It's clean. He said, "Well, you know, cordon blue ball sounds better than beer nuts." <laughs> so that's 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 Tommy checking in that's, on the same level, same DNA uh, as myself. That's the that brother. <laughs> He's driving the brown truck. Faithful listener checking in and uh, loves the show. All right, come on down to Andy Max. It is the John Riston Show. We are on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo, 1350. First and ten Thunderwolves from the 29-yard line. Ball on the right hash mark. Here come with that power formation. Three tight ends right up right next to each other on the left side of the formation here. Kind of a stack. Thompson's up under center. They give it to Cam. Bounce it off the left side behind those tight ends. Big hole. Across the 40. 45. Gallops across the 50. To the 40. 30. 20. 10. Touchdown. Thunderwolves. What a run by Cameron McDonald. Touchdown for the Thunderwolves, 71 yards. Never get tired of listening to a Cam McDonald touchdown, right? So many of them this year. And, uh, in fact, uh, I was with Dax Larson today talking, you know, you're a sports information guy, and uh, we're he's putting together something, you know, trying to get Cam up into the forefront there of the uh, Harlan Hill uh, deal. So we're going through some of the scoring plays we've had this year. So he's putting together a nice little deal there, trying to get him to the forefront. But again, he was the National Player of the Week. You know, he's not needing much talk to He's letting his play do his talking for him. When you win Player of the Week nationally two weeks in a row, that kind of elevates you. Yeah, I... I... I don't even know how or who votes on all this, and, and the so I sports think information directors from all over the country. So the Division Two football playing sports information director. So Dax is ilk nationwide, and he's got all those ties in the Minnesota area. So so you got to convince. It's kind of like a, pol- a political season. No, it's just you know I. 
to be honest with you, the Harlan Hill is 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 like the Heisman. You look at stats because a lot of these people don't know who these people are. But now with YouTube and yeah. Twitter, and you can click on something to click on and and watch a, a montage of 19 touchdown runs. You yeah. go, oh, okay, he's pretty, he's pretty good. good. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like his chances. Well, I, I, you know, he's played himself in there, but you know, like I said, Cam. And all of us will give credit to the ten other guys that play right. in that position. He's the first one so, to you too, yeah. And uh, it, it's it's nice that we've been able to do, you know, just like you documented that run right there that it was behind the tight ends, and it wasn't like one of those runs where he at mines where he was fabulous run, and I mean we kind of parting seas, and he outran the safety, and so that was nice. I don't, I I would uh, if I'm a Ben guy, that's not going to happen this weekend. I, I guarantee you. Yeah, so watch them a little bit. Watch the uh, TV broadcasts. Uh, the broadcast. Their defense looks pretty stout. We'll get to them in a little bit. we got questions here. 719-671-7574. If you got a question here in the house, you want to come up and get one of these beautiful footballs here, you got to ask. And you come on up and you can win one instantly. We've got uh, five or six questions lined up here. First of all, we'll, since it ties in with the road trip, uh, Ken Frannick wants to know road games. How much does it build camaraderie on the football team? Now this week... <laughs> John, you had the uh, great opportunity to uh, give a lot of your players a look at Mount Rushmore. I mean, that has to be thrilling for the players. You know, there's some of them, this is their second trip there, but the others that was their first trip there had to be uh, just a tremendous experience. Yeah, I, I still uh, think that's one of the, you know, we talk about Americana and Statue of Liberty and Golden Gate Bridge, but Mount Rushmore is right there with all the things that you've been able to do. And I, I had not seen him until two years ago, and then be able to go through. And it, it was funny. I, I got an email from um, um, a group of people that were out there also. There was a family that was there, and they happened to strike up conversation with. Uh, um, probably five or six of our, our players and they absolutely uh, loved the um uh, the interaction with our players and, and they sent a great email and and uh, they wanted to uh, guy was wearing a Michigan hat and they go uh, it, and there were, our receivers were saying well we're coached by Roy Roundtree they said coach Roy Roundtree coaches with you guys and they, <laughs> they go I want a picture of him and doing the whole bit so Roy had already left and, and so uh, Roy had taken a picture of the statue of the, the guy who uh, was a chiseler of the right. Rushmore and and uh, so I I got this email and so they're describing all this and I'm trying to make this story shorter but in all reality they Roy took this picture with them in Michigan and gave it and sent it to the people in wow. Michigan and they absolutely loved it it was one of the more most rewarding emails I've got about our players Michigan gotta love it Jim we have a guest let's do it you got a chance to win name. a football you here we go your name your occup no just turn the mic on there too it's, yeah. it's on yeah, okay and and ask away my name is Lorraine Eggleston and I have a question for coach Riston yes miss Lorraine you know Mace is a hard hitting team especially their offensive line it's very strong what is your plan of attack against that <laughs> wow oh, geez. Like that's like not a softball, no softball question. question jeez up uh, high and tight can, can, that, you, can you repeat that question <laughs> it sounded sound like I'm, it was at a beauty pageant that, you that, know I had to ask that question like that you know I was looking for a coach's badge instead of a, a, a ball or some jeez. tickets <laughs> you, you know the reality of this thing is is uh, th their uh, offensive line and defensive line is, is very physical and they're very athletic uh, but what, what I think they're very long on the offensive line and what I think we've been able to prove over time is that our guys are have some great size and uh, is athletic so I'm anxious to see that that, ma uh, that that matchup I'm anxious to see what how our guys uh, respond to the movement that we have created for them you know their stunts and stuff that we're going to do and uh, in all rowdy our offensive line with their they got one of the best nose guards besides Tony Campton and uh, we we got to make sure that we put a, a you know a couple people on him, and uh, we just got to make sure we're targeted right, and we got the basic fundamentals to be able to succeed. And, and I'm looking forward to this matchup. It's going to be a great challenge for us. Great question. Yeah, that was All right. that was not your typical what's on your playlist question. Yeah, <laughs> no, I. Uh, <laughs> she, I thought we were at the beauty pen. Yeah, she was a judge. Yeah, exactly. Thinking, that's the first world peace. <laughs> yeah, world peace. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's not right when she hasn't had a Snickers. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, that's all right. And give to the night away. Yeah. <laughs> all right, John, you know, I got a follow-up question from uh, Madison and Abigail. This is a little softer oh. for you, but uh, it may be hard-hitting because it can be painful. But uh, the two girls want to know, have the wasps been bothering you guys on the field at home games at the Thunder Bowl lately? How's the wasp situation? You know, we, we're not talking about white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. We're talking about the Stingers. We uh, we haven't noticed them. You know, we we had, we've had to dodge some tarantulas and do those yeah. things. But the the tarantulas. I was walking on the field with uh, Coach Folda today. We're checking out some things, and we're walking down there, and I pointed down, and he said, "What? What?" I said, "There's a tarantula right there." And so did he run squash? He goes, "Wow." <laughs> You know, I don't think you ever appreciate. You know, when you're in the basketball courts, you don't handle things. But we, we, uh, we don't really uh, see the wasps. But thank you for your concern. We do have a couple kids that are allergic to those things, and we have uh, what's what's that pin called? Epi pin. Yeah, that that thing too. Jules. And and uh, so we're we're prepared, but that hasn't been a factor for us. But thank you for your concern. Hey, we got another All question. Right, here we go Get again. House. So in another football. Here we go. Uh, it's got a collection. Name, rank, and serial in, number. In, in, in deep into the mic. Deep into the mic. Uh, closer. Think? Closer. Like to know if you... Turn it on there. That would help. Turn it on. There, there you go. go. All right. There we go. That works much better. Yes. I'd like to know if you have any other prospects like last year that have the potential to go to the next level. You know, uh, I, I do, but... Um, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd draft all 18 of them, our seniors, <laughs> because I think they're that good and they're great football players. I think uh, we, we got three or four kids that are getting a lot of attention. We just had the Buffalo Bills through Tell today. them who was there yesterday. Uh, the Denver Broncos. And, uh, and who was with the Denver Broncos? Well, representing the Denver Broncos. It was Coach Kubiak's son that, that has been oh. uh, with, in, you know, they, he works in the player personnel, and there's about three or four guys that I, I know personally from doing that. But in, anyway, I, I think they're excited about Cam. I think they're excited about Zach Martinez. I think they're really excited about Morgan Fox. I I think uh, they're, they're, the guy who's really coming up in the stocks and the way he's playing is both uh, DeAndre Cooper and Kieran Duncan. And so the guy that's kind of a sleeper on this whole day is our long snapper. And Jake? you realize how important he is when he missed the Black Hills game. And, we, you know, it's going to be tough to get him back this week. But th- those guys are getting a look-see. Gary Dixon a little bit. Ben Astica ha- has uh, – we had a – guy a scout from the Canadian League who threw on Tuesday and he, and I, I said just take a look at number 40 because I think he's a heck of a footballer. He goes coach I'm really glad you get him. I wrote him up and I really like him and, and I'm going to be back in the spring so you know I, I think we're going to have maybe three to five kids have a chance I really do but um, you know those, those kids are focused on, on what's what's up happening this week and, and so but it's nice for those kids to have those opportunities great question all right, all right thanks take your football there good job thank you that's how it's done folks now the two great footballs are gone but if you want some tickets if you still want uh, if you don't have tickets for the game this weekend we got tickets to give away as well if you got a question here in the house let's get uh, one more out of the way uh let's see which one do i want to do i think i want to save that one for after the break but Ooh, uh saving questions yeah, now it's not uh, firing that gun yet well uh, you know both these are kind of going to be in depth kind of things so Ooh. You know what? I am going to save them. I'm going to save them for after the break, John, because... Well, because I, you have it, Cordon Blue. Yeah, I, I got that. I got that on my mind. I wanted to dig in for a little bit more there, and this is a nice four-minute break we got here, so we'll, we'll do good with that. But we are here at Andy Max. Still plenty of time to get on down here. Plus, you can join us afterwards. You can have some of the Dirty White Boy tacos. You can have the pizza that John and I like, the cheeseburger pizza with some wings naked. Those wings are... No, we're not naked. The wings are naked, and we dip them in the sauce. Joe just has beverages. Yeah. He has balls are enough for him. So, but uh, everybody else can come on and join us. Have a beverage. Have something to eat. Talk to the coach after the show and during the show for all that matter. Come back after this timeout. This is the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo, he's, thirteen he's not fifty. Really necessarily straight with us when it comes to injuries. <laughs> Third down and seven. Dort in the ball game, play action. Thompson sets in the pocket, fires corner round. He's got a man open. Caught touchdown, Kieran Duncan. Great grab. By-
by Duncan as he looked that in. He knew he was going to take a shot, but he got it. Got the one foot down he needed. Touchdown, Thunderwolves. Miss. Coming in hot, Striker. That is just painful. That <laughs> was hot. I don't know. Well, huh? I, uh, you know, I, I see my knob here <laughs> on my machine, right up here. Focus. You know, I've lost that, so I, I don't, I, I don't have the ability to adjust it as well. You as need awesome. a, a, a clothespin or a. Uh, I need paper something. Clip. I need, I need hey, something. Hey, we there. got a radio show going. Yeah, exactly. Guys. All right. Well, it's the technical. Well, it's part of the radio show is a technical thing. But, oh. uh, we, we got another question in the house here. Come on, on, step on up. Win yourself some tickets to the big game on Saturday. Name, rank, and serial number. What? My name is Austin, and. Uh, I was wondering if uh, you felt that it was important to have a home game this year uh, as opposed to playing on the road in the playoffs considering what happened last year with all the the pregame noise and the during the game noise and all that. If, if you felt more comfortable at home this year or uh, are you equally comfortable on the road? Great question, Austin. You, you know, I, I think one of those things is you, you always love playing here at home, and, and uh, we're lucky enough. This is a playoff game atmosphere here uh, Saturday against Mesa, and, and uh, yeah, I, I think there was um, it was kind of referring to our last playoff home game versus West Georgia. There's a little. Uh, 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 shenanigans going on before the game and it's funny, I was looking out my office and I was telling the officials about it and then it'll get it under control and I look out and sure enough, it was going down and so uh, I, I think that you you much rather do that here at home in, in your own environment here and feel a little safer with with all that all right. about with, with, with the loss at West Texas, and you've said it every week on the show, you've been in playoff mode pretty much ever since, yep. since that game. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, you almost got to be perfect, and you got to be perfect in this this region almost, the way it's, it's playing out. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it's nice to, have, yeah, again, like I said earlier, it's nice to play for something here in November, and it's nice to be able to have a chance to play Mesa for something. And it's that's what college football is all about here in Colorado. All right, we're going to get the get a ball autographed here eventually, but we'll just do that while we're talking here. But yeah. uh, next question is going to deal with, uh, and we'll talk about it here first. Everybody wants to know about this regional ranking. How can you be the fourth-ranked team in the country and drop from five to six in your region? It just doesn't make sense. But people, I kind of I calmed them down. I said, okay, let me explain it out to you. I wrote it up on the Facebook page and everything. It just all comes down to basically, John, doesn't it? Because you have the exact same record as Mesa. You have the exact same opponents with the exception of one. The one opponent that's different was Midwestern State. They lost to them in overtime. Midwestern State defeated West Texas A&M, a team that you lost to. So I guess when you look at it logically, you shouldn't be probably ahead of me. When you look at it, if you don't know what happened last year, you don't know all the history of everything that's gone on, you don't know about you beat them like a drum the last five years. But if you just look at it this year and you put the blinders on, they've got to be ranked ahead of you. I, you know, Joe asked me about that, and I said, I, I agree. I mean, there, there's no if, buts, and candy nuts about it. The way that the schedule works out with all the criteria, there, there's no argument that puts us in front of Mesa right now. You know, it's going to it's gonna play out. Yeah. That's what you want. You want to have a chance to play out. And so the reality of this saying is we're right where we should be. Um, and in, in, in two weeks is where it really matters. And we still got to play. Uh, we we got to play this Saturday, and then we got to play next Saturday to play, have, a, have any argument about anything. It will all play out by the time the season ends. Well, yeah. and the, the, the great thing, and I've, I've tried to tell people, you're you're kind of one of those master motivators, and you couldn't have got a better carrot <laughs> when the regional rankings came out. Look, guys, we just got snubbed. Let's go play for it because the be- I mean, the, the one that the, the it's right in front of you. It's a team that leapfrogs you, so you get a chance. You you can go prove it on the field now. You don't have to prove it on paper in a conference call. The, the reality of this, I have not brought it up in front of a team. I have not brought up any regional rankings when we've gone through this whole thing. Period. I'm. We our team is focused on on at 2:05 Saturday afternoon to go play a game. Our our kids have not mentioned it one time. My inner circle that I meet with every Monday, you know, I I just said, hey, this is coming out. 
Uh, you guys got to be aware of it, just so you know it. And, uh, yeah. and that's what it is. And so we have not brought it. We, we don't need any. That doesn't motivate us. Our but motivation I mean, is being able to take each play and play 60 minutes as hard as you can and put your head down. I, I, I know on, on paper it looks like motivation. And, and, and it, it probably adds a little fuel to the fire to, to this game for this competition. I mean, Mesa's put in a, they're, them in a position to be able to go win this game. And also put them in a ranking that they can move in and, and be a number two seed here with yeah. their schedule, with what they got. So there's a lot of motivation for everybody to go play this game. I firmly believe that the winner of this game, game will host a, play, a, a home playoff game. I firmly believe it after it's all going to sort out. Yeah, the reason that's going to... we got... Big Sexy, you got a question? Look, All right. Look at this. You know, I, I heard a, a deal today. They were uh, talking to the Baylor guys. I, I, it might have been on ESPN. It might have been on CBS this morning or whatever. They got some big guy who plays for Baylor. He's about 6'8", 400 pounds, something like that. And his nickname's Big Sexy. I go, the Big Sexy lives in Pueblo, Colorado. It's right here, John Hancock. John, give us a question, buddy. Turn hey, the coach, mic on. There you got it. You got it on? Okay. Yep. All right. Let's it's go. On? There you yeah. got it. Hey, Coach, I just want to tell you, outstanding job you're doing again this year. <laughs> and um, me and my wife, 100% big time fans. I, I appreciate it. But I got it. one question that I don't know if, you, uh, if it, you can, they can do it or how you can do it. But um, coming to the shows here every Wednesday, uh, is there any way that they would let you or can you? Are you, are you allowed to show the games, the away games, like here on the TVs, that, uh, that I mean, some of us can't make it to some of those games, and it just kills you when you're listening on the radio. Right. <laughs> yeah. Good thing we got two great reporters. <laughs> I don't but, blame you. If we can just see some highlights, or, or are you allowed to do that? Uh, you know, that's that's above my pay grade. I don't make those decisions, but I think it would have a great atmosphere to have, play those games and you know, do that. I think, you know, there's a lot of... Um, you, Yes, I think it's possible. Whether it, it can be done, I I don't know. You know, I, I there's right. no issue. I think John uh, here uh, would love love to have that, and uh, you know maybe that's something that we can add down down the road on that. But great suggestion with that. Thank you, thank you. All right. Well, this week's game is on Comcast, but I don't think we have Comcast in this facility. This is a Direct TV establishment. So if you have Comcast, the game will be televised, and it will be they run it three times. They have the live broadcast. Then they show it uh, on Sunday, like at the 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, somewhere in that slot. Then they show it again on Monday or Tuesday. So there's three opportunities. Just DVR it and watch it like we do, and uh, that, you can take care of that. Plus, the live feed is available on the Internet, every on the stretch Internet, too. Um, so that's you got to have a computer that can yeah. get, get that helps. Uh, and a good so, high speed connection. So uh, that's uh, yeah. But we're, we're, boy, that official just took a shot in that Bowling Green game. Oh Look at pick up his hat. Yeah, there we go. Now to finish off this regional ranking thing, we'll get it put to bed here. Fair State, they're going to finish number one. They get two pretty easy games. Okay, they got a, their four and four game this week. I guess you could say maybe they could get upset, but I don't think it's going to happen. So you're looking at them being number one. Texas A&M Commerce and Midwestern State have to play in their conference tournament. One of those te two teams is going to have another loss before it's all said and done. Both of them could have another loss before it's all said and done because of the, the final four are facing each other. So, you know, one of those is going to drop off. Ashland, they got a couple tough ball games left. They could lose a ball game, but even if they win, you'd think they'd they jump up to two. Then, like you said, the winner of our conference should get up to third, fourth at least, Maybe even third, because one of those Lone Star teams is going to drop off. Now, you could say if Midwestern State and A&M Commerce play each other, then the winner shouldn't be penalized so much that they drop below everybody because they're having to play each other again. But, but like you said, I, I agree with you, John. If you win your last couple games, the, the, whoever wins this RMAC title is going to be no worse than the four seed, with a possibility of being even three. Yeah, I, I think, you know, this playoff uh, talk... In these regionals, there's there's 
a lot of criteria are coming into yeah. play. But a lot of it's not apples to apples. It's apples to oranges sometimes. And some of these teams are only going to play 10 games, 10 Division right. two games. And so when it really doesn't come to play if you're undefeated. But what comes to play when you have a one-loss or two-loss team, and those are the, the winning percentage, and then your opponent's win-loss percentage. And so I, I think that what's going to help us, believe it or not, is Central Washington has to go win. West Texas has to go win. And then we we got to do our job to make that even a factor. Yeah. So the, it, it's really it's it's great dialogue, it's great discussion, but a lot of times those things are, are it's not apples to apples with those things, and that's why the committee. Uh, we have to sort those things out, and it's common opponents. It's um, 11 Division Two wins. How many games you won on the road uh, in region games, and so there, there's a lot of pauses for both Mesa and CSU Pueblo, and so the winner of this game is going to have an opportunity to host a playoff game. You know, I'm, I'm firmly convinced of that, and so I, I don't know where that's going to fall. I don't know how it's all going to sort out. You might, we might end up facing each other again in a couple weeks. Who, who knows what's going to happen with that? Yeah, exactly. how, how long do those conference calls take? You know, I, I spent some time on it on Sunday night just to get my collect, uh, collect my thoughts, and, and, and that takes a while, as you guys know. But, it, it, it uh, you know, I try to go through some different criteria, and then um, Monday morning at 8 o'clock, uh, we're on it. And it's usually no more than 45 minutes to an hour. Sometimes it's, a little, little, sometimes it's just cut and dry, and there's no discussion. And you, you have two people from each region that uh, is a part of making the, these decisions. And, and uh, the other RMAC member along with me is uh, Gary Hunter from uh, Fort Lewis, who's the AD, AD there. Great man. Great. Uh, I've been enjoying visiting with him. And then the AD of West Texas, and then the head coach at a Angelo, and then uh, Dell Robinson, who's the head commissioner of the Goliak up there, and then uh, Paul Winters. Um, is the head coach at Wayne State, and then in that other league, it's the head coach at William Jewell, and then uh, um, I'm drawing a blank on, on the last guy. But so that's you have equal re representation. So you know, Colorado School Mines played uh, William Jewell, and so those guys have comparison. That's how it kind of works. The only comparison we don't really have is the Goliath. You know, those guys have seen Indianapolis and, and see how that goes. So, um, it, it, you know, you, you just keep winning out and playing the game, and, and it, uh, that, that kind of solves it. All right. We got one more segment. I got one more question, but it ties directly in with uh, this week's opponent, Carl Mesa. So we'll get to that question. When we come back after this timeout. We're going to talk about Mesa football. That's coming up next. How are the fun rules going to deal with them? Right here. From Andy Max, it's the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Formation. They leave Neal in the ball game to play fullback. Cam is the eye back. Thompson up under center. Give it to Cam off the left side. Big hole. Puts his head down and just barrels his way into the end zone. There was a roadblock standing at the goal line. That roadblock stood no chance. And welcome back to Andy Max for our final segment here at the John Riston Show. And that was uh, just a classic camera. And that guy was standing right at the goal line. He had Cam size up and Cam just barreled him over. It was great. Roadblock. Seek and destroy. Exactly. All right. We've got one more question here in the house as well. Two more. So we got a statement and a question, I think. But to the floor. You know, Coach, this isn't a question. It's more of a statement. You may agree with me. You know, people have talked about how Pueblo's a high school sports town and I know the chief the chief didn't cover them like crazy but I just want the people of Pueblo to know you know you guys are all missing out you could be coming out here to see some really really great players we got a bunch of division one players playing on division two you got guys that you should be coming out and seeing Cameron McDonald you could watch this guy run it's just like fun to watch him every play you got Kieran Duncan that is <laughs> yes. the guy reminds me of I don't know what he's awesome <laughs> I hear you how about Morgan we, Fox oh yeah Morgan Fox is amazing how about Tony uh, Campton we can go on and on, 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 on exactly and Greg O'Donnell 
I know a lot of the a lot of these games in high school, the Bell game, the the Cannon game, are an event that you got to go to. But if you guys want to see really, really good football played right here in Pueblo, and you can tell your grandkids, you know, I saw Morgan Fox play when he was playing for CSUP, and now he's in the Hall of Fame. You know, that's the kind of that's the statement I want to make. Right. I can't believe that stadium is intact every week. I, I That's all agree. I got to say about that. I, all and, right, and, Charlie. And, and I, all right, Charlie. Charlie. I, I appreciate you saying that, and I'm going to feed off that a little bit. Is You realize that we live in a town of 125,000, and we have an opportunity to have uh, 10,000 people here. There's more people that go to watch a high school game here in the city of Pueblo. It is what it is. Come out and support the red, white, and blue, All right. and you're going to have something special. And we got one more question here. All right, let's go. Hi, this is Tundra's dad. Hey, Tundra's dad. Who's going to be oh. there to bring out the thunder on Saturday as usual, but what can the crowd do, Coach, to help along? I, You know, I, I think that it's very important to just have a lot of energy. Be excited when you're there. And, and cheer our guys on. We feed off that. When defense has a ball, you know, make a lot of noise. Right. Make it tough for the offense to hear the ball. And then when, when Cam or A.J. or our offensive line makes a great block, go celebrate that. Have 60 minutes of college football to go celebrate. And this is not just to sit there. It's sit there with your friends and cheer and enjoy it. And we need the students. We need all the people here stomping on your feet. Just enjoy the atmosphere. Enjoy the game. Get into it. Have a little passion about it. And, 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 and howl. Okay? Just howl as loud as you can and do it for Tundra. I appreciate the question. Thank you. All right. You know, Joe and I talk about it, John. Speaking of the correct one, Cam gets the ball. You can, it's palpable in the audience when, what? I don't know what you mean, but. No, I'm not talking to oh, you. Okay. So, oh, you're talking oh, yeah, but, but, yeah, but when he gets the ball, there's a genuine anticipation of when, then when he does break through the hole, I mean, the crowd just explodes. They love watching this guy run the football. Well, I, I again, uh, we, he's a special, special kid, and like Charlie hit it on the head, it, it, he, he's just one of those special athletes. That's a shame that you you, you don't come out and see. I, and I don't know, I'm gonna throw, you know, history kind of repeats itself. We, we back in in uh, when it was Southern Colorado State College, we had Frank Grant went on and had a great career at the Washington Redskins. How many guys in the city of Pueblo took advantage of watch, watching him play? I don't know. We, we when I was lucky enough to hand off a ball to a guy named Herman Hurd that was a third round draft pick at Kansas City Chiefs. How many guys in the city of Pueblo didn't come out and watch him play? So, hey, get out and come out and support. And, it, you know, the colors are red, white, and blue. Yeah, the Americana. And, and, and it's part of uh, being the Central, part of being Centennial. That's why it's all here. So it's not a bell game, but I'm telling you, if you come out here, it'll be so much better than anything you ever experience. And, and, and you know what? You can buy a $5 ticket and sit on the hill and have a great time. So don't give me the price is a problem. Get your you know what in the stands and let's go have some fun and there's plenty of free food if you know the right people in the uh tailgating there there's oh, plenty so of much tailgates all right we got about three minutes three and a half minutes to talk about mesa one of our questions wants to know who are the playmakers for mesa if you're watching this football game and you show up at the thunder bowl who do we got to watch who do we got to keep our eye on one guy's really tall on defense i know the tallest linebacker <laughs> in the history of football i think you, you know the besides the stork the, the guy that's stirring the drink there is our quarterback sean rubicall that's uh was transferred from uh northern colorado he's a grand junction native he's grand junction high school we try to recruit him He's a tremendous athlete. He, he's going to make plays, and we, we got to contain him. And then uh, the, their little running back is DJ, and he, he's got a lot of speed. And he, he's fast. He's quick. And then he, they got a bevy of receivers. This Moon. Yeah, Moon's yeah, pretty good. Moon, and uh, he's explosive on that. And their, their offense line is going to be as big and tall as anyone we've seen. And then on defense, they, they got a nose guard that has hair that grows out of his. Yeah, I mean, it, it's impressive. And he played here two years ago and gave us fits. Right. And I saw him after the game and and um, when we played over there. And he said, I, I hope you get eligible and do all the things. And he did. And, and I have a lot of respect for him because he plays the game the right way. And then they have Tommy Sager, who's a linebacker that we recruited. And we, we recruited hard. 
And uh, he's inside linebacker, and, and he's going to spend... 6-7, right? Yep. And and there's Burrell, their, their corner, is leading the conference in, in interceptions. And so he he's a 6-3 corner that can run and, and has hips, and he does all the right things. And so it, it's it's going to be a heck of a matchup. So I think their playmakers, and their defense is uh, second in the country, I believe, right. in scoring defense. I think that it, it's going to be a great matchup versus their defense versus our offense. I think it's going to be another great matchup, our defense versus their offense. I think that's what it's going to come down to. The special team's got to be special. They've got to do all the right things. They're going to change the atmosphere. It's going to be two great matchups of two evenly matched teams that are here on a great motivation to go play. And Come out and celebrate. Come out and have some fun. Be loud and proud. Wear your red. Come early and stay late and stomp your feet until your feet hurt. As far as matchup goes, this is probably the biggest matchup as far as a conference game. You have to go back to the game when Mines came in or for the night game. I mean, that kind of powerhouse is going against each other. We all know how that one ended up 23-6. to It was a slugfest. I think we got the chance to have that same type of deal. When you look at their defensive numbers, your defensive numbers, this is going to be a, it could be a game like the West Georgia game was last year when you just get down after it. Well, I, I guarantee you, Russ Martin and the Mason Mavericks will take a win by one point. Yeah. I guarantee you, John Rister and Thunder was going <laughs> to, I'd take a win by one point. And it's that mentality that you got have. I think two teams are going to go hard at it, 60 minutes, and uh, enjoy. what This is what college football is all about. Come out and see this. Hey, the weather's going to be awesome. Perfect. It's going to be a great day. It's not going to be hot. It's not going to be cold. I, I eliminate excuse here. That's I, right. Just, just give me another excuse, and I'll solve it for you. So, hey, come out. Be loud and proud. Let's go, Pueblo. Wear your red, and let's go have some fun. And don't worry about it. I taped the condensed broadcast. You can listen to it a couple days later. You don't have to worry about listening to this. We'd like you to, but that's not an excuse either. I got rid of that one, too. Okay. All right, there we go. The game is Saturday, 2 o'clock from the Thunder Bowl, the battle for the RMAC title. Mesa is the opponent. We'll be on the air at 1.30, 2 o'clock kickoff right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. Tony Wright has high school football for you on Friday night. It'll be South and Centennial, the battle for the 4A Southern League crown. We have that for you right here as well on Fox Sports Pueblo. Until we talk to you on Saturday from the Thunderbolt at 1.30, for the coach, John Riston, for Joe Servi, for everybody, Andy Max, for all of our fans, everybody showed up, all the questions. This is Jim Brooks bidding you good night, as well as thanking Tony Wright, our producer and engineer. Good night, everybody. Go back.